Hello, this is video 12 and in this video I'm going to add some animation to the game. So if I just run what I have so far, um, we've got a player that is quite static so it's just stood very very still and then when I move um, use A or D to move left and right Although the player does change direction, um, it just looks like it's gliding. Um, so I'm going to add some animation, I think. Um, and similarly for these coins, they're they're just they're very static. And if I show um, the images folder, you can see that I have actually got. Um, so for example, for the coin, I've got five images. That give a sort of rotating animation so I've got everything I need to animate um, I just need to write some code to do it and the same for the player I've got uh, image 0 1 2 and 3 are four images for like an idle sort of slight bouncing up and down animation and then 4 to 9 I think is a run cycle and then there's lots of other things here like um, getting hit crouching um, I won't use those I don't think I think for now I'll just stick to these things so I'll, I'll animate the coin and I'll add a player idle and a player running animation and they'll be linked to different states of the player so I think that's what I'm going to do in this video I should also probably say that um, this is video 12 and I think this is probably the point in this series where I'm, I'm not going to treat these uh, videos like absolute beginner videos so I think it just means that um, I think I said in the last video the concepts the code might get slightly more complicated hopefully not by much but inevitably as I add more and more features to this game it will become um, a little bit more complicated and also I'm not going to worry too much about the length of the video so up until now I think videos have been quite short um, I'm going to aim for um, less than an hour. I don't think any video will be longer than an hour, but um, I imagine most of them will be between 30 minutes and an hour. Um, so let's make a start. Um, so I think the first thing I need to do, so I cropped this coin image. Let me just have a look at my code. Um, the coin... So the coin image we said is a rectangle 23 by 23 and the image is coin 0. So if I have a look at the properties of this image you can see it's 23 by 23. But these other five, so coin 1 to coin 5, I don't think I've changed those at all. So they're still 32 by 32. So what I might have to do, and I do apologise there will probably be quite a bit of this in this video is I do need to change um, the size of all of the images so that they're um, 23 by 23. So so that's a 23 by 23 rectangle. Um, Try that again. So that's you can see at the bottom it says 23 by 19. So I need a couple. So what's that? 21. So that's now 23 by 23. So I'll crop that and overwrite. So I've now got two images that are 23 by 23. I need to do the same with these other ones. So again, I'll draw around this. I've got a height of 23, but it's only 17, 18, 19, 20. So 
that's 23 by 23 as well. So that's 10. So I'm just cropping these and then overwriting the images. Uh, I've just got two more to go. It's unlikely I'll get this exactly right actually first time. So I might have to edit some of the images. Um, whoops, so this is the last one. So that's 21, so that's 23. There we go, so if I discard all of these because I've already overwritten the images that I have. I've now got, um, I don't know why I can't see the preview of these, but I've got six images, coin one, oh, sorry, coin zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, a new class um, an animation class um, which I'm then going to animate um, instead of just having static images. But what I think I'm going to do is separate my code um, because lots of what I'm creating here is stuff that's just relevant to this game. But I'm going to be creating lots of things like um, animation classes, camera movement, you know, lots of things like that in the future that are sort of more game engine. Um, it's more game engine code than code for this specific game. So I think I'm going to have another file called engine, which I'm going to import here. And it just means I can separate my code. So I'll create a new file um, and I'll call that engine.py. So all I need to do is create a file in the same place as the platform file called engine.py and then to import that code into here I just need to write import engine. And I think what I'm going to do um, is to say something like um, Where's the coin image? So coin image. Um, so I'll just, I'll comment this code because I'm not going to use it just yet, but I think I'm going to have sort of coin animation. And then if I create a new animation class in my engine.py file, I can just sort of say this coin animation is an engine dot um, animation. Something like that. And then later on, when I have um, this coin, I can sort of say coin animation dot draw. or something like that. So I can replace drawing an image with sort of rendering or drawing an animation and a coin 
image so this will later be replaced with this coin animation so that's what I'm going to plan to do so I'm going to create a new class um, called animation and I think when I create um, a new animation and sorry that I'm not really going to spend any time introducing object orientation as a concept I think it's if, if you're not really um, if you've not used object orientation you can either sort of just copy my code um, or you can sort of go and, and watch a short introduction and come back but um, in the initialization of an animation um, object I think I'm going to pass um, a list of images so for the coin when I create a new coin animation I'm going to pass in coin 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 and all I'm going to do is to store um, is to store that image list Oops. in a variable called image list so the images that I pass in I'll just be storing um, in the image list um, variable here so that's going to be a list of images um, and what I want to do is I want to cycle through those images. So the first thing I need to do is to have something called um, like an image index, which is the current frame in the animation. So to begin with, it will be zero. And the idea is it will go from zero, in the case of the coin, it will go from zero to one to two, three, four, five, and then back to zero repeatedly so the coin will look like it's spinning um, so I've got a list of for the coin this will be a list of six images and currently this is image zero is the current image and then what I need to do is to count a number of frames so I'm gonna have sort of an animation timer which is currently set at zero and I'm going to increment that every frame and when it gets to a number like 10 I'm going to set it back to zero set the timer back to zero and increment to the next image um, so what I might also do is to add something like animation speed to say 10 so that I can just change the speed of an animation and the lower I make that the quicker the, sp the animation will cycle so that's that's the initialization method for an animation um, so what else do I need to do I need to have something let's let's also have an update function So what am I going to do each frame? So each frame I'm going to increment this timer so the timer will go from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. When it gets to um, If it's greater than this animation speed, I guess I could do greater than or equal to. So the timer is incremented from zero, it's got to 10. So now we want to go to the next image. We want to set the image index to the next image in the list. So I just want to say um, self.image index 
plus equals one. So what that means is, and then I want to set the timer. In fact, I'll do that at the beginning. So once it's got to 10, set the current image to be the, the next image, but I also want to set the animation timer back to zero. And then it will go up to 10 again. And then once it's got to 10, the image index will be two and then three and four. Um, so that's fine apart from the fact that it will keep incrementally until it gets to, it will go past the highest number. So it will go zero, one, two, three, four, five, and then it will go to the next item which doesn't exist. But what we want to say is once it's at this last image to loop back round and the index should then be set to zero again because we go from the last image in the list back to the first. And there are a few different ways to do that. But what I can say is I can say if the um, image index is greater than the length of the image list, minus one, because we start at zero. So the length of this list won't be five, the length will be six, but the index will be zero, one, two, three, four, five. So if the index is higher than the number of items in the list, we want to set the image index back to zero. So that should be updating every frame. And then I guess the final thing to do here is to draw it. And we just want to say screen. Oh, and if I'm doing screen.blit, then I'll need um, to import Pygame here. And I want to say um, what I could do is I could grab the code for drawing the coin. Let's have a look. So what I might have to do is when I want to draw something, I might have to pass the X and the Y coordinates in. I don't really want to tie the X and Y coordinates to the animation. The animation shouldn't need to know where it is. So when I draw, I'm actually gonna pass the X and Y coordinates. And I'm not drawing the coin image here because I want this class to be usable for any game object eventually. What I want to draw is the image list um, at the image index. So if I have a list of five or six items, index is zero. So to begin with, it's going to draw the image list item zero and then when the image index is incremented it will then be the first item so this item one which is the second item um, so that will draw the item in the list depending on whatever the index is so to begin with it's zero which is that first item so that's the That's the animation class. So what I need to do now is to basically uncomment that code. Um, so coin image we don't need anymore, but we do want coin animation. Um, 
So engine.animation, and we need to pass an image list. So I'm going to pass a number of items in here. And I'll just grab this and see if this works. So I want to do, how many are there? Six. So I'm creating um, a coin, a new coin animation using this new class I've created, and I want coin images zero, one, two, three, four, and five. So there's a list. So I'm passing in a list of um, six elements here. And then when I draw, I don't want to draw this coin animation. I want to say coin animation dot draw. And I want to do C dot X, C dot Y. So it's unlikely that's going to work first time, but I'll give it a go. Um, so I think I'm missing a colon there. Um, oh, okay. And also, I can't just call screen dot blip because screen is actually defined here somewhere there. So what I might have to do is when I draw, I might have to pass in the screen to draw to and then the X and Y. Because again, the animation shouldn't know or care about the screen that it's drawing to. Um, you should pass it everything it needs. And all it has to worry about is its list of images. So let's try that. Nope. So it says coin image is not defined, so it's being used somewhere. Um, oh, I think I know what's happening. I do still need the coin image for the display at the top left. So let's um, let's not get rid of that. I'll leave that in. There we go. So it's, it's still drawing, um, but it's not animating. And the reason is it won't animate unless we call this update. So let's say if the game state is playing, I just want to um, update the coin animation. There we go. Let's try that. There we go, so it works. And what it's doing is it's incrementing um, every 10 frames. So if I change that to be four, and run that again. It should speed it up because it will increment every four frames. There we go. Maybe that's a bit quick. Let's say it's six. Okay, so we've got um, an animation class here that, um, I should probably comment this actually at some point, but we've got an animation class that um, we can now use to animate the coins. Um, now for the player, we could do the same thing. Um, it's a little bit more complicated for the player because we want to animate the player 
based on um, its state. So we need an idea of player state really. Um, so we've got the game state, so we've got the player direction. Let's add something called player state. And to begin with, let's set it to idle. And I think for this video, to keep things simple, I'll just have two states for the player. It'll either be idle, which will be the sort of resting, sort of bobbing up and down animation cycle, or the player will be walking either left or right. Um, and it will be walking. So it will be one of those two things. And so what I think I need to do then is to have something called player animations. Probably in place of this player image, but I'll leave it in for now. And what I want to do is I want to say that pl uh, player animations is equal to a state, so idle, and an animation. And I'll put some stuff in there. And then I also want uh, walking to be um, another engine dot animation. Like that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this. Uh, so this is a dictionary. And what it's mapping is this string, so either idle or walking, to the right animation. Um, so if the player state is idle, I can say grab the animation associated with the idle state. And then just like the coin, I can update that and draw that. So what I could do is, first of all, to see if we can get um, a printout of the player state. So if I say um, so in the player input, if the left key is pressed, player player state should be walking. And similarly, if the right arrow key is being pressed, or sorry, D, to move the player right, the player state should be walking. And if um, if neither the A or the D key are being pressed, so if not A and not D, then we want to be in the idle state. And what I think I'll do is just, and I'll take it out in just a second, is to print the player state. So what we should find is the player state is idle. And as I use the arrow keys, you can see walking and then idle again, walking, idle. So we've now got a player state that keeps track of whether the player is idle or walking. And I just need to pass in the images here to each of these states. Um, So let's just do idle to begin with. There's a little bit more um, image editing to do now. Let me just remind myself. So it's 45 by 51, which is the same as here. So 45 by 51. So I need to make these three images the same size. Um, So 
So that's 45 by 51, that's the same. So again, just crop and overwrite. So that was one. Let's do the same for two. So that's 45 by 49. Um, so, so I think if it's bobbing, I think I need to do that. So I think that's because the character's a bit lower. Um, I can always change that if I need to. Crop and overwrite. And then I think there's just one more to do. And that's 45 by 51. Great. Okay. So I'll get rid of those. So I should be able to say that my idle animation is... Um, image 0. And then I'll change this to be 1, 2, 3. There we go. So my player starts off in the idle state. So when I draw, instead of drawing the player here, I want to say, um, Let's just put that back here. So I want to say um, so player animations of whatever the state is. So there's a player animation for the idle state dot draw. And the same here. Now, this here is if the direction is right or left. And I'm flipping the image if the player is facing left. So there's no way of me passing, currently there's no way of me passing that to the draw function. Um, so I could, um, what could I do? I think the simplest thing to do is just here when I say draw the animation, here's the screen to draw it to, here are the x and y coordinates and I'll tell it whether to flip on the x coordinate or flip on the y coordinate. And then I just need to, it's this line isn't it? So it's a bit more complicated now. Let's put this in. Um, so that's what it was. So it's... This image the same as before. But now we want to pass... Um, flip X... Flip Y and then this should be just X and Y. So we've now got a slightly more flexible um, draw function where we can tell it whether to flip an image um, on its X and Y. Um, 
So flip horizontally or vertically. So so I just need to say draw to the screen. Um, at player X and player Y. And here it would be true and false. Oops. So this is just whether to flip it here. So I'll take this out. And then this one actually needs to be the same. Um, so I'll copy that line, except here it's false. So if it's pointing to the right, I'm saying don't flip on the X axis. If it's facing left, I say do. Um, and so I can take that out and I'll also just comment this out for now as well. Oops. And before I forget, I'm going to need to pass. So the coin is just going to be false and false. So I never need to flip the coin image at all. But I do need to make sure I pass. Um, well, actually, I don't. But it's, it's probably good practice to pass in the two flip X and flip Y to say that they're both false. So let's try that. Oh, again, okay, so what I keep forgetting to do is to update um, the player animation. So I'll do that. Um, update player, an uh, just here. And what I'll do is I'll just do, um, player animations, player state, so I'll only update the one, the current. There. There we go. So the player is now bobbing up and down. Um, and the Animation speed is always the same. I'll leave it for now, but it's always the same for every animation. So if I want to make the player bob up and down a bit slower, I change that to eight. But by making that eight, I'm actually also slowing down the coins, which I don't think is a big problem for now, but I think that's okay. And then if I try and use the A or D key to move left and right, I'm pretty sure I'll get an error because um, it's now trying to what it's doing now is it's setting the player state to be walking because I'm pressing left or right. And then it's trying to increment an image list and there's nothing in there. Um, so the walking animation is four through to nine. So I'll copy and paste these. So I've got uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the walking animation is four to nine. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yep. But um, I could try that actually, but it's gonna look strange because I haven't edited. Um, so we've got idle. And then, so it is walking, so it does work. Um, but because the image isn't cropped to the right size, um, it's drawing all the white space, and so it's drawing the player in the platform. So that's all working. Um, I am still printing. So let me just take out that line that prints the player state. I don't need that anymore. 
So I think I just need to do a bit of image editing. So for um, through to nine. And I need to make them the same size, I guess, which is 45 by 51. So I'm hoping that that will work. 45. So that's So that's 45 by 51. Um, I'm guessing because of the, maybe the player crouch is slightly when it's running, I don't know, but I'm, I'm happy to leave them two pixels there for now. I guess you could, I mean, there's lots of ways you could personalize, you could personalize each animation. You could have an animation speed associated with each animation. You could even have an image size associated with each animation. Um, or even each state. I, I'm not going to worry about any of that just yet. Um, I'm just going to do what I have been doing, which is to crop and overwrite. So it's 45 by 51. So that is 45 by 51. As long as each image is the right size, I'll just um, not worry too much about it for now. So that's 45 by 51. Probably a good job I'm only doing two states with all of this um, image editing. So that's 45. By 51. Two more. Right, so I think I've made all the images the right size. I'm not quite sure how it will look, but we'll we'll try it. So I've got the idle animation. Oh, there we go. I'm not sure if that slight bouncing up and down is supposed to be there or not. Um, not going to worry too much about it now. Um, so, um, so we've now got um, the idea of some animations um, with a series of images using this engine.animation class here. Um, so it might be a good idea just to recap how this works while I um, while I comment the code. Um, so really, the bit I need to do is to sort of increment the timer. Um, 
and then here it's um, if the timer gets too high then we want to reset the timer increment the current image and then here it's um, loop back to the first image in the list once the index gets too high The rest is fairly self-explanatory. Great. So I think that might be it. So um, an animation class, we've got um, coins that animate, we've got a player that animates now in two states. We've got idle and we've got walking left and right. So I think we're done. Thank you.